Well, hi, everybody. This is Josh Nelson with HVAC SEO. I uh, really appreciate you joining us on today's webinar. Excited. I'm going to be sharing you guys uh, some tips, techniques, strategies, ideas on how you can more effectively market your uh, plumbing and HVAC business online. And I'm just going to kind of hold off for a few minutes here and let uh, a couple other people get on the call. And uh, we'll, we'll plow right into it. In the meantime, there's a... Uh, Comments box just below. So if you've got questions, um, if you've got feedback, additional things, feel free to type in your question. Come to me via email. I'll try my best to answer it during the uh, session. If I don't, you can rest assured that either me or somebody on our team will get back to you right away, uh, you know, within 24 hours with our feedback or our answer to your questions. So we do want to keep it as interactive as possible, though, so please uh, you know, type in your comments, type in your questions, and we can keep this uh, as interactive as possible. Well, again, everybody, uh, thanks for joining me on the on the webinar. We're going to be talking about internet marketing and SEO techniques for your HVAC and plumbing business. Um, you know, this this webinar is actually brought to you by HVAC SEO. We're associate members of the PHCC and affiliate members of the ACCA. Uh, my name is Josh Nelson. I'm the co-founder of the company. Um, and I've got a picture of myself and my wife and the, and the HVAC SEO team. Our office is located in Doral, Florida, but um, you know we service clients all throughout the United States and really spend, spend our time and our days keeping up with the latest changes on Google and Yahoo and Bing and um, you know the Facebook profiles like Facebook and Twitter, and, and really finding out what the what the real techniques are, the, te the strategies are that will help our clients get to the top of the search engines, get more service calls, and really grow their business. You know, we wrote the complete guide to internet marketing for plumbing contractors. We have an HVAC version of that book coming out here in the next couple months. Um, but what you're going to get on this webinar really is a lot of the information that. Um, that we put into that book and a lot of the even new information that's come up with the changes in Google over the last couple months. So that's just to give you a little bit of background about who we are, what we do. We have a passion for internet marketing, a passion for helping uh, plumbing and HVAC businesses really grow and, and take their business to that next level. What we're going to be covering on the webinar, uh, we're going to start off just by talking about why uh, search engines and internet marketing is so important for plumbing and HVAC businesses. Then we're going to demystify what's going on on the search engines. Uh, a lot of the HVAC and, and plumbing contractors I talk with are a little unclear about you know what actually happens when you type in your city plus AC repair, your city plus HVAC contractor, uh, and there's really a lot going on. There's the map listings, the sponsored or pay-per-click listings, and the organic listings. I'm going to talk through each one of those different sections of the search engine, kind of share some strategies on how you can set yourself up to show up as often as possible for what you do. From there, I'm going to talk really specifically about how to get on the Google map, or Google Places optimization, Google Plus local optimization, whatever you want to call it. It is one of the most commonly asked questions that we get from plumbing and HVAC contractors, and that's, what do I have to do to get my company listed on that map? And I'm going to take probably a full 20 minutes just on that specific topic, going this very... Uh, granular detail about the best ideas, strategies, and tips. There's some very specific things you can do to improve your probability of showing up on page one on the map in your area. Then I'm going to talk about what we call SEO or organic placement, how to get show, how to show up in the non-paid listings of the search engines. Um, I'll talk about the most commonly searched uh, plumbing and, and more specifically for this webinar, the the, the HVAC keywords and how you can optimize your website as far as you know what pages you should build uh, what little tweaks you can make to your website so that Google knows your services and can put you in the list for those and then how you can develop the authority of your domain or, or your website so that it will rank well in the search engines for the specific keywords that you want to be ranking for talk a little bit about some important online directories you know there was a time where you could get a large ad in the yellow pages and for the most part, if somebody was looking for HVAC-related services, they'd take out the yellow page and you could show up. And you could feel pretty confident you were showing up you know, a large percentage of the time when people needed your services. 
I'm going to talk about it in more depth, you know, throughout this presentation, but you don't have that same impact anymore. The, the places people go when they need services is very fragmented. And so I'm going to talk about the really important online directories that you would want to potentially have paid advertising in that will give you that same ability to show up that large percentage of the time when people are looking for what you do. And then I'm going to talk about social media. And social media is really hot. And a lot of the you know business owners I talk with say, you know, I, I, I know Facebook is hot, I know Twitter's hot, but I don't understand how it applies to my uh, cooling and heating business. I don't see how it's going to help me get more customers. I'm going to go into depth on that and share some specific strategies, some proven strategies on how you can leverage Facebook and Twitter and Google Plus to get more repeat business from your customers and more new business in, in terms of repeat and referral business. So take out a notepad, you know, get yourself in, in a position, maybe grab a cup of coffee. I'm going to be going through this information relatively quickly because I've got an, an hour with questions and answers uh, slotted for this. So brace yourself. You know, I'm excited about the information. I think you're going to get a lot of value out of it. And as I've done this a few times for, for the plumbing-specific industry, um, you know, the feedback's been great. I was in uh, Florida at a PHCC event a couple weeks ago, and you know, the, 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 the attendees all came up to me and said, man, this is some of the best Internet marketing information I've received. Um, and I, you know, I go to all these different events. So, I mean, the, the feedback on the information you're gonna, about to get is very good. So I just want to show you that, you know, it's one thing for someone to stand on a soapbox and say, hey, you know, I, I've got all the ideas, I've read all the books, and I can help you get on the search engines. It's another thing when there's proven results behind that information. So I just want to show you that our clients do get top placement on the search engines. You know, just for instance, and, and, and you know, the reason I share this is really to show you that these aren't theories. These are proven practices that are really getting results for plumbing and HVAC clients throughout the United States. Uh, so here, you know, just for the search term, Fort Lauderdale Plumber, uh, the, the client there is in Spot A, Town Plumbing, um, Atlanta Plumber, Spot A, and I'm just showing you really competitive markets so you can get a feel. Rancho Cucamonga Plumber, Spot A, uh, Santa Monica Plumber, Spot A, uh, Miami Plumber, Spot A with multiple page one listings. Um, and again, I don't show you those to brag or to say, hey, look, we're, we're the best SEO company in the world, even though I happen to believe that to be true. Um, I say that because the same ideas, strategies, and techniques that went into getting those results for those clients and for the other clients that we serve throughout the United States are exactly what I'm going to be sharing on this webinar. So, you know, block, you know, close the door, set yourself aside, and just spend some time to soak this information in and um, you'll get a lot of value out of it over the over the course of the next 45 minutes. So let's start just by talking about why search engines and internet marketing so important for plumbing uh, and HVAC businesses. And it all starts with the notion that there was a major transition in the last five to seven years from what we call offline marketing to online marketing. Um, it, it wasn't that long ago, if, even if we just go back five to seven years, where the yellow pages, a wrap truck, maybe a van on your building, I mean a, uh, a sign on your building, was enough to really market your HVAC business in a pretty proactive way and get, you know, get your phone ring on a consistent basis. The majority of the people, when they needed HVAC repair services, pulled out their yellow pages, flipped open the, you know, to the section that talked about AC repair or AC installation, and if you had a nice sized ad, you could pretty pretty consistently get your phone to ring with people looking for you. Now, in that period of time, the five to seven years, people stopped going to the yellow pages at the same velocity that they once did. They're not going there anymore. So it creates a void. It says, man, where are they going? If they're not going to the yellow pages, they have to be going somewhere when they need these types of services. And the answer is, for the most part, they're going to the internet. They're going to Google, they're going to Yahoo, they're going to Bing. In some cases, they're going to Yelp, they're going to City Search, they're going to Angie's List, but they're going online. Um, as a matter of fact, a survey of 2,000 consumers found that more than 86% of them used the internet to find a local business. 
So why is internet marketing important? It's important because that's where your consumers are looking when they want to find your services. We did do some keyword research uh, just to kind of get a feel for how many searches there are on a monthly basis for you know the plumbing and HVAC related terms. And you know we were able to, by looking at the trends, find that there's over 20 million searches every single month for the types of services that you provide. So the potential is significant. I mean, there, there's lots of opportunity and having a strategy to make sure you're showing up that those searches are taking place is important and it's going to help you grow your business. Just to give you an example, you know, internet marketing really will help you get more inbound calls and help you grow your business. Um, we work with uh, a relatively large uh, plumbing contractor down in the Tampa market. And he was a big time Yellow Page advertiser, been in business for over 20 years, uh, and found that the number of calls he was getting from his various marketing efforts wasn't producing at the same result that it once did. Um, and he was relatively early in the, in the curve on getting involved in the internet. So he set up a website and he paid an SEO company. Um, but he just wasn't ranking well. He didn't have a good strategy for showing up for the services that he provided. Um, and what we found in working with him was one of the strategies we like to put in place is putting a call tracking number in place so we can see how many calls are actually coming in via the website and the various online channels. And early on in the first month, he got about 11 calls via the Internet. And we consider that probably to be mostly organic-related calls. So somebody typed in, you know, his specific company name, they were just looking for his phone number, and that's where those calls came from. Now, after getting optimized and having his website built with some of the strategies I'm going to be sharing throughout the course of this webinar, he found himself, you know, better positioned, showing up for those searches as people were looking, and by the third month, he had 57 inbound calls in, in that one-month period directly via the web which is a pretty big jump. I mean, it's almost more than five times more calls um, just in a, in a few month period. I can tell you by the ninth month, he had 125 inbound calls, you know, on, on his, you know, via his web internet marketing channel and um, now averages over 100, 130 to 140 calls every single month directly via the web. And, and I mean, it just goes to show you that by having a proactive internet marketing strategy in place, you can get a lot more inbound calls and get a lot more business to your HVAC, you know, to your HVAC company. So, I mean, that really is, is just encapsulating this whole concept that internet marketing is very important. There's a huge opportunity for you as an HVAC contractor. Um, and so if you harness that opportunity, you can see an increase in your business. Are there any questions on this portion? You know, I'm going to move on now to demystifying the search engines. But before I go there, are any, are any specific questions on that uh, portion of the presentation? Okay, the question is, someone's got a question. How, how do you know how many calls came in? It's, it's through call tracking. So in other words, on, the, on this client's specific website, we put a call tracking phone number that is his same area code, rings to his office just like it always does, but it gives him the ability to see uh, on that specific phone line how many people called in, and it tracks how many calls actually came in via the web. So that's how you're able to, to track that. And it, it's a pretty good practice. I mean, it just helps you, you know, gauge your return on investment. You know, if you're doing direct mail, if you've got an ad in the in the newspaper, uh, you'd probably be well served to put a tracking number on there so that you can see how many calls are coming in. We just happen to take that that notion and apply it to internet marketing. Okay, so let's talk about uh, the search engines and and kind of demystify for you what's happening online. Once you type in your city plus AC repair, your city plus HVAC contractor. Um, you know, there's there's three major components to the search engine. There's the pay-per-click listings, also known as PPC, and that's what we've got at the top and along the sides highlighted. Then you've got your map listings, which are, you know, what show up typically right at the top of the search engines in the non-pay-per-click area. And then you've got your organic listings, and that's the area below the map. So there are three different primary areas on the search engines. 
the the pay per click listings or the paid area is is driven by AdWords, which is Google's paid advertising, and this is where Google actually makes its money. It sells advertising and it's sold on a pay per click basis. So with the pay per click advertising campaign, what you can do is you can pick your keywords: AC repair, heating repair, your city plus AC contractor, your city plus AC installation, and pick those words and within relatively short order be showing up in the paid listings for the words that you want to show up for. The caveat to that being you can't pay a flat fee like in the yellow pages. You couldn't say I'll pay two grand to be in the number one spot for the word my city plus AC repair. You're not buying a, uh, a category in the same way. The way this works and the reason it's called pay-per-click is you only pay every every time somebody actually clicks on your ad which is good because you're actually paying for, for the performance. Um, but the price is set by a bidding system similar to, let's say, eBay. So you pick your inventory of keywords, a, you know, AC repair, AC contractor, heating repair, heating contractor, you know, and the list goes on, and you would bid. So for the term AC repair, you might say, I'll pay $5 for everybody that clicks on me for the word AC repair. So if you did that, and you know your three biggest competition in your area, the three big guys, let's say they were bidding on that same word. One might say, I'll pay $15, and the other might say, I'll pay $7, and the other might say, I'll pay $6, and your bid was 5 At the broadest sense, and there's a lot of other factors, at the broadest sense, the guy that said 15 has got the top spot, the guy that's bid 7 has got the next spot, and so on. It's more complicated than that, but it's it's a bidding system similar to that, where you're you're only paying every time somebody clicks on you, but at the same time you're you're having to manage this bidding process, and it can get relatively expensive when you're looking at you know seven to fifteen dollars per click to really be competitive in your market. But that's the pay per click area. You buy positioning in in the pay per click area. The next section is what we call the map listings. Also, at some point, it was called Google Places, now being referred to as Google Plus Local. That's the, the area that shows up at the top with the A, B, C, D, E. And there's typically a map um, you know, listed next to it or somewhere around it. You can't buy your way into the map listings at any level. I mean, there's no option to say you know, anything. You couldn't, you couldn't say, I'll pay 10 grand for spot A. It's, it's just not an option for you. The way you get listed in the map really is driven by Google finding you to be a quality, authentic, transparent organization in your market. And I've got a, a, a lot of details and a lot of information I'm going to be sharing on how to get listed in the map uh, You know, as far as claiming your map listing and optimizing and getting reviews. There's a lot that goes into it. But... Again, you can't pay for your positioning in the map. It's driven by other factors. And then the other section on the search engines is the organic listings. Um, again, you can't pay for your position there. The, the organic listings really come into play for, you know, for, for keywords outside of AC or player plus your city. Maybe for more specific things like train AC installation in your city, uh, train installation, you know, or train AC rep repair in your city, those types of things where the map necessarily doesn't populate, but you sh you have to have the right content on your website with the right authority as far as inbound links, and that's how you're able to, to position yourself in the organic or non-paid listings on the search engine. So again, you know, just to, to kind of recap here, you've got three separate sections. The pay-per-click listings where you're able to pay your way in, You've got the map listings where you've got to have name, address, and phone number information. And then you've got the organic section, which is driven by the content on your website and the number of inbound links and the authority of your actual domain. So the question that usually follows is, okay, so there's three different sections on the search engines. There's a couple different ways I can make sure I'm showing up in my area for what I do. What's the best strategy? Should I just spend my money and my energy on the, on the pay-per-click listings should I ignore that because it's too expensive and just focus on organic and, and just, you know, organic listings? And my answer really is you want to have a strategy to be sure you're showing up as often as possible when someone types in your service, your city plus your service. Um, so you want to probably have 
a strategy to get you know in the pay-per-click listings and manage that effectively. And there's a lot of things you can do to to manage and and with a with a good strategy, you can actually pay less than your competition and still rank high. Um, you want to have a strategy to make sure you're showing up in the map and the organic section so that you have placeholders all over the search engine for each of the different things that you do. Now, with that said, if you've got a limited budget, you know, in other words, you don't have ten thousand dollars a month to spend in advertising online, and you want to get the best return on investment for your time and for your energy. Um, I'm going to pull up a chart here that you can look at, and what this shows is where people typically tend to click on the search engines when they run a search. And you know, this was a study done by Comscore, and what they found was more than 70% of the population when they run a search, like for instance, they type in, you know, your city AC repair, more than 70% of the population is going to look straight at the map and organic listings, so the non-paid listings. Again, remember that the paid listings are what's on the top and along the sides, and the organic non-paid are, are what's in the center box. And the reason for that is, you know, a lot of a lot of the population has kind of been alerted to the fact that that's advertising, and kind of the notion is, when you get when you buy a magazine, are you flipping through the magazine and looking for the ads, or are you looking for the content for the information? The reality is, in most cases, you'll look at the ads and you'll notice them, but you're really looking for the content. You're looking for the articles. You're looking for the pictures. And that's similar to that on the on the search engines. When you run a search, you know the ads are there. In some cases, you're going to click them, but for the most part, you're looking for the content, which is in the organic section. And this other image on the right with the with the moving lights and it looks like there's got a lot going on. What that is, is it's a heat map and they use eye tracking software to see where, you know, statistically where the eye looks and what it spends most of its time looking at. And, you know, this heat map also kind of indicates that the majority of the people skim right past the organic section, spend most of their time looking at the map and the, and the organic section. They skim past the paid listings and they look right at the organic section. So, Again, if you've got limited budget and you want to get the best return on your investment, you're probably going to be best served focusing on the map listings, the organic section, building more authority for your website, building more authority for your organization so you can rank in that area where most people wind up clicking. So one of the most common questions that I get from, from HVAC and plumbing contractors uh, all throughout the United States is, Okay, how do I get my company to rank on the map, the Google map, when someone types in my city plus my service? And, you know, there are multiple layers of complexity when it comes to answering that question. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's not something you can buy your way into. You can't pay-per-click. You can't pay per, you know, per spot A or pot, spot B. You literally couldn't call Google and say, hey, I'll give you five grand if you put me in spot A for, you know, San Diego AC repair. It's just not an option. There are really actually three core components that come into play when getting ranked on the on the Google Map. The first is having a claimed and optimized Google Places listing. And that's just a function of you going out. There's a formal process for claiming your Google Places listing and letting Google know you're the owner and then optimizing it by putting good information, pictures of your staff, pictures of your trucks, pictures of what you do as an organization, and making sure you've got the right categories selected and a clear description of your services. So claiming and optimizing your Google Places listing. The second real critical component is having a consistent name, address, and phone number uh, online. So not just having your company name listed in Google Places, in order for Google to feel that you're authority in your market and that you're a credible player to you know, really place you in the map, you need to be listed on other sites like City Search and Angie's List and Judy's Book with the same information, same name, address, and phone number. So having a consistent map across the web, and that's what the second image is. It's you know you being referenced all over the web. And the third critical component is having real reviews, online reviews from your real customers and your real service area. We find is a critical component for getting ranked on the map for your service plus your city. Now, obviously, you don't want to try and scam the system. You don't want to try and get fake reviews. You need true reviews because the fourth component, which isn't as heavily weighted as the first three, is helping Google under, understand your true service area. 
especially within home services. Google doesn't know what you know, you know whether you serve a 10 mile radius or a 50 mile radius. So helping Google understand your true service areas is another critical component for getting ranked on the Google map. So I'm going to drill down into each one of these in more depth. Um, so let's start with claiming your Google Places listing. And if you haven't already done this, and this is new information to you, I would say, you know, take out a pen and paper and write this down immediately. Google.com slash places. And I'll just skip forward here. This is what the page looks like. It's Google.com slash places. When you click that image on the right there that says get started, there's a formal process that Google takes you through where you can formally claim your Google Places listing and then from there optimize it with information about who you are as a company, what you do, pictures of your company, pictures of your trucks, and things like that. So let's talk about how to claim your Google Places listing and some best practices. When you when you go in and claim your Google Places listing, it gives you the option to list your company name. And one best practice as it relates to to doing that is you want to only list your true legal name. So you don't want to list, you know, Pete's Plumbing and Heating in Tampa, Florida. That's adding information. You only want to put your company name there. So just Pete's Plumbing and Heating if that's your company name, if that's how it's listed online, if that's how you incorporated your organization, that's the way you want to do it. Don't ever add additional keywords here. There's some outdated information online that would indicate, hey, why don't you just add your city in there? That will give you some more authenticity and it will help you to show up more often. Bad strategy is actually against Google's uh, policies and procedures, so you don't want to play that game. You don't want to do that. Then you're going to have the option to add your website address Obviously, you want to put your address in there. Your website address creates a nice inbound link. It also helps your consumer, your potential customer, to be able to go and get that additional information. You always want to use a local number. Don't use an 800 number. As a matter of fact, 800 numbers don't rank very well. I rarely see in plumbing and HVAC companies with an 800 number ranked. The reason for that is it's called Google Plus Local, and it's specifically meant for local businesses. So the connotation behind an 800 number is, oh, well, you know, I'm in Tampa and you're in some other state. You're in San Diego, and if I dial this 800 number, I won't be incurring a charge. Don't do it. It doesn't rank well. Plus, statistics tell us that uh, local numbers actually rank better. I mean, convert better. That if a, if a customer gets to your HVAC website and they're reading about who you are and what you do, and you've got a local number, they're more apt to call that local number than an 800 number. Another best practice is you need to use a local address in your Google Places listing. It's not going to work to use a P.O. box or a UPS store. There was a time you know, where you could do that. It really just doesn't work as well. Google's privy to that. There were some guys that were teaching you to in every little city that you wanted to rank in, go out and set up a UPS box store and claim your listing in those different areas. Um, for the most part, the companies I've seen that have done that in the past are now blackballed. They can't even rank in their main city. Uh, so don't try and play that game. Use your real business address. And if it's a house, that's fine. You can get away with using a home address because there are businesses that happen to operate out of a home. You just need to play by the rules. And so one of the rules that Google dictates is as you go through the process of claiming your Google Places listing, it asks, do you service customers at your place of business? In other words, do they come to you like at a, at a store, at a dentist, or are you servicing them out in the field? And it's a yes, no question. So you obviously need to answer that. Um, no, we don't service them at our place of business. We go out to them. Then the next question that it asks once you say yes or no to that is it says, it asks if you want to show your address or not. And so you have the option at that point to either say, yes, please show my address or don't show my address. If you work from a home office, you can hit no, please don't show my address because you shouldn't show your address. Actually, Google mandates that if you work from a home office, you should not be showing your address because you don't want people using the Google map to find you and come to your house. So you need to put no there. You can still rank. We have clients that rank quite well 
on the Google Map from a home address with a hidden address. So, you know, play by the rules, use your real address, hide the address if it's a home office, and then if you don't have a physical address and you can't list your home office, the other option is a virtual office, is a worst case scenario. And a virtual office is just, you know, those uh, office buildings that will rent you a suite within their, uh, within their building. And maybe you don't actually work there, but you have access to mail and you've got somebody that answers the phones for you there. Um, you can usually get a, a virtual office at a relatively cheap rate. And that's an option for you to be able to at least establish yourself on the map and have a place of business because you're going to have to verify via phone. The next thing you want to do within Google Places is upload photos. And you want to upload as much content as possible. And so Google allows you to upload up to 10 pictures and up to five videos. So on the on the pictures, upload upload 10 pictures and try and make them as authentic as possible. And by that I mean don't just don't just grab stock photography, you know, the picture of the guy with the wrench and um, and the picture of the AC unit. The, the more authentic the photos, the pictures, the real pictures of you and your team of guys and your trucks, you know, stacked in order and the building and, you know, your guys out in the field with a wrench in front of a train AC unit, for instance. But that type of stuff re resonates well. It works well. You want to do that. You want to upload videos, too. It's very, very simple to create a YouTube channel, make a simple video either from an iPhone or uh, you know, a little mobile mobile um, video camera, and just a, a brief video. You know, maybe a picture of your truck, a picture of you know a scanning picture of your truck, scanning picture of your team, and then you standing in front of the camera saying, "Hey, I'm the owner of you know Pete's Plumbing and Heating, and we provide AC installation repair services to this specific area." kind of talk about, you know, your unique selling proposition, and, and that's it. You know, save that, upload it to YouTube, sync it to your uh, Google Places listing, and that resonates well, too. I mean, the more authentic information like that that you can put out, the better. Just some, some additional tips on what you can do with, with video and, and, and your pictures is, first of all, your, your images – Name them something specific. So don't just name it image one, image two, image three, or use the default that your camera spits out for the image. Name it your city plus AC repair dash your company name and AC repair dash your city and then company name. That way you're getting some keyword context into your images. Another really kind of best practice as far as how you can leverage your, your images and get more context to it is to use a tool like Panoramio. And Panoramio, and you can go to panoramio.com, is a image sharing site. And what you can do is you can upload an image to panoramio.com, and then you can name it, like I just said, but then you can also geotag it. So you can put your company's address in the settings on the image, and now Google says, whenever it, you know, whenever you've uploaded it to YouTube, Google spiders to your um so your Google Places listing follows that image off to Panoramio, sees the GPS information, follows that GPS information back to your map listing, and it gives a lot of context and a lot of um, you know authority information that would say, okay, this is a real company that's operating in this area, uh, and it really helps with, with all of that. And so those are some really good best practices on how you can optimize your Google Places listing. One thing to pay close attention to is if you haven't claimed your Google Places listing and you're doing this for the first time, you're going to get the option to either verify via phone or verify via mail. So if you haven't claimed your Google Places listing and you've been in business for some period of time, it's going to give you that option to verify via phone. Where that's, op where that's available, you always want to do it. So you select verify via phone. When you press submit, you'll get a call almost immediately. And it will be an automated system that says, hey, this is Google. Your PIN code is 44632. And you write that down. Enter it in your Google Places listing at google.com slash places, and you're cooking with greets. You can go in and follow all of those best practices I just recommend. recommended. If you haven't done that yet and you're starting a brand new business, you might not have the option to verify via phone. And what's going to happen is it, it will say, well, we're going to send you a postcard. And you've got to wait a few days, something like 10 business days. You'll get a postcard in the mail with your PIN code, and that's how you complete the verification process. 
And so actually, if you want step-by-step -step instructions on how to do this in the best way possible, you know, how to save your images and leverage Panoramio and YouTube, you can go to hvacseo.net slash free. We've actually completed a guide that takes you step-by-step -step through how to claim your Google Places listing and, and, and do all of that stuff. So the next critical component that I talked about is establishing your net. So having a consistent name, address, and phone number across the web so when Google you know, looks at your organization on Google Places, it's not just finding you there, but it's finding you on you know, Facebook and Twitter and Google Plus, uh, I'm sorry, and uh, Angie's List and Yellow Pages. And that's how you help Google get the sense that you're a, a credible organization. Remember, it all comes down to authority, so you're an authority player in your market, and transparency. And the transparency part is you know, having the same name, address, and phone number. So if your company name, like I said earlier, is you know Pete's Plumbing and Heating and Air, and that's how you're going to reference your organization, you need to make sure that's the way it's listed on all of these different websites. You need to make sure that you use the same phone number. You know I talked a little bit earlier about using tracking phone numbers and how you can leverage tracking phone numbers to you know gauge how many calls you got, hear recordings of your conversations, and really track the return on investment. When it comes to your online NAP, name, address, phone number, you need to use your true landline phone number that's associated with your business and, and ideally the most historical one that you have because it's going to carry authority and transparency. Uh, and then the, the way that your company name is referenced, there's something to pay attention to. You know, If you've got a couple different addresses, you need to pick which one's going to be the primary one and be specific with the way that it's referenced. So if you're at 12553 Southwest 10th Street, um, is that Southwest SW or is it Southwest Southwest spelled out? Um, and and you know, little nuances like that are actually very important. And so you want to make sure you've got that right name, address, and phone number on all of the online directories uh, consistently referenced. There, there are literally hundreds of online directories that you could list your company in. Um, you know, there's City Search and Google Local and Bing. There's a tool called WhiteSpark, which is a citation finder that helps you find the, the, the most relevant citations. And a study was conducted uh, of literally thousands of plumbing companies and looking at the plumbing companies that are ranked at the top of the search engines. And what they did was they went and saw which citations, which is just you know online directories that reference a company's name, address, and phone number, carried the most weight. And what it found was Service Magic. Yellow Pages, Super Pages, eLocal Plumber, um, Yelp, BBB, YouTube, Yahoo Local, and Dex Nose, of all places, were the most authoritative citation sources for plumbing, plumbing and HVAC companies. So you want to, you know, you want to make sure, if nothing else, you're in those directories and that you've got your information consistently referenced on those places. Now, if you want a complete list of the of the top, you know citation sources and URLs where you can just click it, follow it, make sure you're added. You can go to hvacseo.net slash free. You know, there we've got a complete guide that um, you can download that explains and gives you direct links to all of these different places. So that's citation development, making sure you got that name, address, and phone number consistently referenced online. The other critical component for getting listed on the map is having reviews. So you'll notice the guys that rank well tend to have a lot of true reviews from real customers in their real service area. And we found it to be a critical component uh, for getting ranked high on the map in the area that you operate in. So let's talk about how you can get reviews and some very specific review acquisition strategies, um, you know, things that you can do to get reviews. The easiest way to get reviews is to ask them, right? So it, it might seem like, oh man, how am I going to get people to write a review for me? Well, start start by creating a simple review request card, which is just as simple as creating a, a postcard or a a business card that says, hey, thanks so much for your business. We appreciate the opportunity to serve you. Please write us a review online, and then giving them an easy place where they can go to write you a review. Um, you know, one option is to you know to send them to you know Google Places and the Yahoo Local and the City Search. Another option, which we found to work really well, 
is to create a page on your website that would be yourwebsite.com slash reviews or you know, write us a review and on that page having direct links via the button so they can click on Google Places and go there and write your review or they can click on Yahoo Local and go there and write your review. But the easier you can make that process for your customer, the better. So print out some, some simple coast cards. It does not have to be super fancy. Just, hey, we really appreciate your business. Write us a review. A very strategic approach to this, though, would be to, phase one, develop a list of your circle of influence. So your, your best customers, your recent customers, your friends and family, um, you know, your people that know who you are and know, like, and trust you that you'd think would want to help you out. Of course, you want to make sure that they will have done business with you in the past at some level. Um, and then get their names and email addresses and do an email. Just a simple email blast out to that group of people saying, hey, you know what, we're in the process of trying to do more online and get better placed. And, you know, part of that is getting reviews from people in this area. And being that you've done business with, with us before and, you know, are somebody that we trust, we'd love to have you write us a review and then give them either a link to the specific review profile or to that reviews page that you're going to set up. And that's a great way to solicit reviews and get a nice little base of reviews from your real uh, circle of influence and real people in your service area. From there, you want to get a process in place where you're systematically requesting reviews from your real customers in your real geographic area. And you know, the best way to do that, other than handing them the review card, is to start to ask for the email addresses of your customers. Start collecting email addresses. There's a lot of things you can do to you know, email them with updates, special offers, get them involved in social media. But if nothing else, right after service, send them a quick thank you, appreciate your business. We'd appreciate if you could write us a review. And again, a direct link to where they could write you a review. We find that, you know, in, work, in, in doing this and implementing this in a lot of HVAC companies throughout the United States, one challenge is how do we get the customer to give us the review, uh, the, the email address? And so if you're waiting for your technician to get to the home of the, of the customer and then provide the service and then say, hey, by the way, can I get your email address? I'd like to send you a request for review. Uh, they tend to, they tend to kind of, uh, shy away from that. They don't want to give it because they, they don't see any value in it for them and they're concerned that they're going to get spammed with emails from your company. A better approach we found is at the point of booking the call, say, hey, by the way, okay, so you're scheduled for Tuesday at 2 o'clock or we'll be there this afternoon at 3. Let me get your email address so I can send you a confirmation. If you, if you change the process to asking for that information on the front end, we find that you get a much higher percentage of your customers that are willing to give you the email. And so, of course, you know, you want to send them a confirmation, but it gives you the ability after the service call to push out a request for review via email. And if you can do that on a consistent basis, you're going to get real reviews from your true customers in your true service area. Now, there is a tool that, that can help you with this review request and um, helping Google understand your true service area process. And the way it works is as you and your technicians go out into the field, they would have a mobile, a mobile tool that they can install on their iPhone. The name of this tool is nearby now. Um, and, and basically, it would you know, be an application they can install on their iPhone. And when they get to the place of business, they would load nearby now. They would check in. So you know, they just press a button that would initiate a check-in process. That would then capture the GPS data that's on the phone and say, okay, you know, Pete's Plumbing and Heating just had a service call in uh, Tampa, Florida. And it would plot on the map, okay, this was in Tampa, Florida. And so throughout the day, they're checking in, they're checking in, and you start to develop a heat map, like the image that you'll notice at the bottom of the screen. And that heat map can then be syndicated from nearby now to your website, to your social media profiles, and then most importantly to Google Places. And so when Google Places is now seeing true check-in data based on GPS check-ins all throughout your service area outside of maybe just Tampa but in the sub-cities as well, 
Now it says, okay, that's their true service area and proves the probability of showing up on the map in the true areas that you service. The next thing it can do is help to automate the review request process. We talked about the fact that you know, having real reviews from your real customers is critical. So the next step with Nearby Now would be you've checked in, you've left the, the place of business, and you press the button request a review. And then an email or, or text message could go to the customer and say, hey, thanks for your business. Please write us a review and give them the option to write the reviews on those various online profiles. And then you've really got an automated, systemized way for getting reviews from your real customers. And, and we found it to work really well uh, for, for, for our clients. And so that tool, if you want to check it out, is at nearbynow.co, not com, but .co. So it's nearbynow.co slash contractor, SEO, and um, a great tool. Uh, help you push your true service area to Google and automate the review request process. So in just to recap, though, the, the cre critical components for getting on the map Claim and optimize your Google Places listing. Establish your name, address, and phone number profile, your NAP across the web. Get reviews. Put a system in place to get true reviews from your real customers on an ongoing basis. And what you'll find is you'll significantly improve the probability of showing up on the map in your, in your true service area. So let's talk about search engine optimization. The, the process of getting your company to show up in the non-paid organic section on the search engines. And there, in this case, there are three critical components to, to getting ranked in the organic section. First, you need to have more placeholders. And I'll talk about that in, in more depth in a minute. You need to be optimized, so each of the pages on your website or each of those placeholders needs to be optimized for the specific keywords that you want to rank for. And then you need more inbound links. So you need to create authority for your domain and you need links from true websites, relevant websites, to your website. And I'm going to break that down in more depth, but those are the critical components for getting ranked more often in the search engines. So as you think about needing more placeholders, you might say, well, what do I need placeholders for? And it all comes down to keyword research and understanding what your customers typing into the search engines when they are looking for your services. So I promised I would share with you the most commonly searched keywords within the HVAC industry. So we've got air conditioner, air conditioning, furnace, air conditioners, HV air, HVAC, um, air conditioning repair, duct cleaning, and, and the list goes on and on. So you want to have that list of keywords so that you can figure out what your placeholders or pages should be. Uh, and if you want to download this list of keywords, it's based on historical research, looking at what the most commonly searched keywords are. Um, you can go to hvacseo.net slash free, and then we've got a list of all of those most commonly searched uh, HVAC-specific keywords. So let's talk about what I mean when I say you need more pages. So uh, a typical HVAC website has between five and six pages, home, about us, our services, coupons, contact us. Um, and we know that in order to rank for all of the different keywords that we want to rank for, we just went through our list, we know we need to have a page on the website that's optimized for each one of those. Because each page on your website can only really typically be ranked for between one and two main keywords. So we think you need to expand that out so that you have pages for each one of the services that you provide and then sub-pages for each one of the little cities in and around your core market that you operate in. So obviously you still want your home, about us, coupons, and contact us page. Those are core informational pages that you need on your website. But when it comes to your services page, rather than just listing all the things you do, you want to make a specific page for those services that talk about that specific topic. So AC repair, heat repair, duct cleaning, AC installation, geothermal, filtration systems, humidifiers, and the list goes on and on. But you want to make sure that you've got a page that comes out beneath your services page for each one of those services. And then you want to make sure that you've got sub-city pages. So 
if you operate in, and I'll just use Miami as an example, if you operate in Miami, Miami is your main city. So you want to rank from Miami AC repair and Miami AC technician and Miami AC contractor and, and all of those different words. But the, the typical HVAC contractor services between a 25 and 50 mile radius. So outside of Miami, there's a lot of little subsidies and submarkets that you probably want and need to rank for as well. So in order to do that, you need to have pages for those subsidies. So in this, you know, in the case of Miami, you might want you know, a page for Kendall, Doral, Homestead, Hialeah, you know, Miami Beach. And so by doing that and creating those sub pages, you you can really improve the probability of showing up for the people that might type in Kendall AC repair, Kendall AC technician. Kendall Air Conditioning Services. So you get the idea. You need to have pages for each one of the services that you provide and each one of the little subsidies and markets that you operate in. From there, once you've got your, your pages, right, and you know which things you want to rank for, you need to make sure that each one of those pages is properly optimized. So Google knows what those specific um, pages are supposed to be ranked for or they should rank for. And there's some, there's a lot of different things you can do to optimize your website. I'm going to talk about, you know, if we look at the 80-20 rule, the 20% of the things that will drive 80% of the results. And right now I'm going to talk about specifically on your site, we know we want to have pages for each one of our services in each one of our cities. Each one of those pages now needs to be optimized the correct way. And the first thing you want to look at on a page for optimization is your title tag. And so if we just think about your home page, the typical HVAC homepage is something like the company name. So if it's Joe's Heating and Air Service, the title tag, which you'll see the area they're pointing to, says Joe's Heating and Air Service. In order to get that page to rank for the right keyword, which would probably be you know, their city AC repair, or their city air conditioning repair, you want to put that keyword at the very top far left, as far to the left as possible. So maybe it's Miami AC Repair Service followed by the company name plus the city and state and then maybe some other secondary keyword. That's the better way. And you don't want to just do that on your homepage. You want to do it on the homepage. If you've got the um, you know, water filtration systems page or the, um, the air filter, air filtration systems page, then you want the title tag on that page to be you know, Miami Air Filtration Systems. You want to put the geo modifier in that title tag as well. And so if you did nothing else but go back to your website after this presentation and say, okay, I'm going to change my title tag so it's got my keywords more prominently in the title at the far left, you'll notice a huge impact. And if you did nothing else and just did that and claimed your Google Places listing from this presentation, you'll notice a pretty significant improvement in your, in your positioning on the search engines for the things you should be ranking for. Uh, the other real important considerations from an on-page SEO perspective is you need a unique title tag for each one of your pages. You want to leverage your keyword in your H1 tag, which is the, the big bold block of text that typically shows up after your, uh, after your title tag, which is in the blue bar at the very top. Your images that you have on your website, the pictures of your van, the pictures of your team, the, the picture of that AC unit. You want to name it. You want to name it something specific, like your city plus AC repair or your city plus air conditioning contractor. Um, and then you want to have alt tags associated with those images. Um, you want to leverage anchor text throughout the website so that you know the links carry you from one page to the next. Um, and then what you want to do is you want to create a site map, an XML site map, which helps Google understand. So now you took your website from five pages to like 35 pages. You've got pages for each one of your cities and each one of the services that you operate in. In order for Google to get all those pages in the index or to make it easy for them to get all those pages in the index, you want to submit a sitemap. And so a sitemap can be submitted to Google Webmaster Tools and to Bing Webmaster Tools, and it really just makes it easier for Google to now know all of those pages that are on your website. Once that's done, you know, once you've got your, um, your pages built and they're properly optimized, you've probably completed maybe 10 or 20 percent of the battle. Unfortunately, just having a properly optimized page, all that really does is put you in the index or put you on the list somewhere for that specific word. So let's just use as the example air conditioning repair. 
So you've got a page that's really well optimized for air conditioning repair. Google knows it, and it might put you down on, you know, page eight, which unfortunately, as we all know, no one's going to get to you on page eight. So what's the gap? What would you have to do to go from page eight to page one in the top five listings? Well, ultimately, it all comes down to the authority of your domain or the authority of that specific page on the search engines. And so it really comes down to getting more quality links, links from other websites online back to your website. And if you've got more quality inbound links than your competition, you can outrank your competition. And so he who has the most quality inbound links wins. So where do you get those links? How can you get those links pointed back to your website? Uh, well, again, it's not really just about having other websites pointing to you and getting a bunch of garbage. It's really more about getting quality authoritative links back to your website. So the best place to start is by looking at associations and organizations that you're involved in. So if you're a member of the local chamber of commerce, if you're involved in the local plumbing association, a local AC association, ACCA, at your local chapter, make sure that you're on that website with a link back to your website. Make sure you get a link from the chamber of commerce. These are great links that are very authoritative that will add a lot of credibility to your website. And they should also give you a relatively quality citation for your directory listings for getting listed on the Google map. From there, you know, you want to make sure you're listed in those directories for citation development, but also for creating the authority for your domain. So going into like Bing Local and City Search and Angie's List and Judy's Book and making sure you're listed in there with a link back to your website, that creates more authority, which will help you rank better. Uh, but really, there, there are two critical link building strategies that will help you significantly. The first is content creation. You need to be creating fresh, relevant, interesting information and uploading it to your website, preferably on a blog. You know, if you've got your website in a blog format like WordPress, you can create new articles on an ongoing basis, which creates fresh content, but also helps to get more information and more links back to your website. The other thing you can do to get inbound links is competitive link acquisition. And so competitive link acquisition is running a search for um, you know, your city air conditioning repair and seeing who's got the top position. Um, you know, obviously, you probably know who the big players are in your market, but once you've got that and you know, okay, here are the five guys that happen to rank in page one for my most important keywords, you can reverse engineer their links and start to see, okay, where www.competitornumber1.com you know, has... 75 inbound links to his website and you can see those links and then you can put together a plan for getting those same or similar links back to your website that's called competitive link acquisition one way to do that is to go to yahoo.com type in link colon your competition.com and that's how you can start to get a feel for some of the links pointing back to your competitors site there's also a tool called majesticseo.com which will help you figure out who's linking to your competition, and get those same or similar links back to your site. And so from an SEO organic perspective, you know, having the right website pages with the right on-page optimization combined with fresh content and inbound links, that's what it takes to get your company or your website to outrank the competition. So let's talk about the most important online directories for you as an HVAC contractor. Um, you know, it used to be that you could buy a large yellow page app and you showed up most of the time when somebody looks for what you were doing. The reality is there's been a transition and now people are going online. A lot of people are going to Google, some people are going to Bing and Yahoo, uh, but then there's other people that are going to online directories like Angie's List and Judy's Book and City Search. And so I just wanted to share real quick our experience with some of these online directories and the ones that tend to be driving the, the best return on investment for our clients. And what we found is Angie's List is a tremendous uh, online directory for, for local businesses, um, especially for HVAC and plumbing contractors, because the type of customer that you want isn't probably going to be the, the price conscious shopper. It's going to be somebody that's looking for a quality contractor that can come out, be on time, be clean, do a good job. And so they actually pay a premium 
to get a list of those contractors as they join Angie's list. And so having a premium placement on Angie's list and getting solid reviews on Angie's list has proven to be a great strategy for getting quality customers uh, to your business. That will refer you to others and, and tend to be pretty good customers. Um, another directory uh, that, that is pretty authoritative in the AC and, and HVAC business is, is Yelp.com. And so that's another one you would want to consider and potentially um, CitySearch.com. Those are the three you know, big ones. Obviously, you've got your lead acquisition services like Service Magic and your local plumbers as a way to pay per lead and, and get opportunities for your business. But the, the one I, I see drive the best result for some of our biggest clients throughout the United States is Angie's List. Definitely drives a good return on investment if you run a good business, if you, you know, tend to get good reviews from your customers. So let's talk about social media and, and really how social media applies to the HVAC specific business. You know, I, I talk with plumbing, AC repair contractors all, all of the time, and what they're tending to tell me is, man, I, I know there's a lot of growth and a lot of opportunity in social media, but I can't figure out for the life of me how being on Facebook is going to help me grow my business, get my phone ringing more, or do anything that's going to benefit me. So. The way I like to explain it is just if you if you think for a second, what is your number one source of business right now? Where does most of your business come from? And in most cases, the answer to that question is repeat and referral business. So my existing customers using me again or my existing customers referring me to their friends and family. And that's where the majority of my business comes from. Well, social media when leveraged correctly, if you can get your true customers, those same people that use you again and refer you to others, is an opportunity to take that repeat and referral business, put it on steroids, and take it to a whole nother level. So if you do this thing right, it can result in a lot of repeat and referral business for your organization. As a matter of fact, the average Facebook user has 135 friends. So if you've got a system within your business where you're getting your true customer to go to your Facebook page and press like, by virtue of them pressing like, all of their friends, those 135 people in your geographic area in most cases, are going to log in and see that Judy just pressed the like button and said that they like Pete's plumbing, heat, plumbing, heating, and air. And it's almost as if Judy went out and said, hey, you know, I found this great plumbing company in the XYZ area, and I recommend them. Next time you need somebody, give them a call. I think you can see that there's a major opportunity in, in doing that. So let's, let's kind of unpack where to start and really what the most important social media profiles are because there's thousands of different social media profiles and opportunities. But again, I like to say let's focus on the 80-20 rule. Let's focus on the 20% of the social media profiles that are going to drive more than 80% of the result. And, and actually in social media, it's probably more like a 99-1 rule where 1% of the social media profiles drive 99% of the opportunity. So the ones you want to be involved in, you know, at the very top of the list is Facebook business page. You want to set up a Facebook business page for your business. And it's just a function of having a personal Facebook profile and then creating a business page. Um, you want to set up a Twitter account for your company, at your company, you want to set up a LinkedIn profile, especially if you do any type of commercial related business. You want to set up a YouTube channel. You should have a YouTube channel regardless in order to sync your videos to your Google Plus local page or to your Google Maps listing. Um, but uh, again, you can leverage YouTube as it's a great opportunity to really create videos on an ongoing basis and, and gain traction for your organization. Google Plus. You know, Google Plus is one of the fastest growing social media profiles available. It's, you know, Google's answer to Facebook. You're going to need it in order to have your map listings anyways. So set up a, a Google Plus profile and get involved in a blog. Whether it's installed on your domain or, you know, it's a, a blogger profile, I recommend it be on your domain. But you need a blog because it's going to be the central hub where any new information, any news updates, any information that you guys are putting out should go to a blog and then be synced to your different social media profiles. 
So this is where you want to start from a social media perspective. You want to have each one of these accounts set up and ready to roll for your company. Here's how you can roll it out. Here's how you can start to get your customers involved in the social media profile so you can start to get a, a groundswell that will really lead you to the place where you want to be, which is getting more repeat referral business. First thing you want to do is start to think about your sphere of influence, your best customers, family and friends, you know, your, your people that you associate with, and develop a list of the names and email addresses of those people and put together an email that you can send out to them that says, hey, just wanted to let you know, you know, we've set up social media profile on Facebook and we'd love to get you involved. And, you know, depending upon your relationship, you know, maybe it's just a, hey, look, this is what we did. Go ahead and press like and, you know, it'll be fantastic. Um, if you feel like you'd like to offer incentive or some reason for them to go ahead and press that like button, press that subscribe button, press that uh, plus one button, well, then you can offer a discount or something of value. But you want to have a, a mechanism where you're reaching out to your sphere of influence and getting some type of base of a following on your social media profiles. From there, you need to be consistently posting valuable information. Actually, before we go there, then what you want to do is come up with a strategy for getting your true customers or your customers going to your social media profiles on an ongoing basis. So we talked about getting an email database together and sending it out to your customers after service, asking them to write a review. Well, if you're getting the emails from your customers um, after service or before service, that'll give you the opportunity to send an email maybe a couple days after service saying, hey, you know what, thanks so much for your business. We really appreciate the opportunity to serve you. You know, by the way, we're actively involved in social media. Would you press the like button? And if you do, we'll give you this incentive. Maybe it's 10% off their next service or maybe it's some little trinket that they would appreciate. But now you're consistently growing your following and you're not just getting social media followers for no apparent reason. You're getting your real customers that are going out and engaging with you on social media. So once you've got that core information or that core group in place, you got to do two things on a consistent basis. you got to post information to your social media profiles, otherwise it was all for naught, and you got to engage with your customers that are there. And so by posting valuable information, what I mean by that is you need to be putting information up. And, you know, here's, what, here's what's going on in the local market. And, you know, here are some tips from properly managing your AC. Or, hey, hot season is right around the corner. Make sure you change your AC filter. But try and keep 90% of the information you put on your social media profiles informational and 10% promotional. So more information that's just, you know, topical information and, and a very little bit of it that is, hey, you know, here's 10% off your next service to try and drive the the business machine, the lead machine. Um, from there, you actually, more than more important than even putting out that information is engaging with your customers. So as your customer who has liked you go ahead, goes ahead and puts on, hey, it's Billy's birthday, somebody on your team needs to be following what's happening in that social media sphere of influence and say, hey, wish Billy a happy birthday for us. You know, little touches like that and engaging with them on a personal level via social media is how you develop that loyalty and that ability for them to uh, want to continue to use you and want to refer you to others. So just to recap, you want to optimize your website, right? And we talked about claim your Google Places listing, optimize it. If you haven't already, write it down now, google.com slash places. There you have the opportunity to claim and optimize your Google Places listing. Put a system in place for consistently getting reviews from your customers and establish that NAP online, that name, address, phone number, so it's consistent and you're going to improve your probability of showing up on the map. You want to build out pages for each one of your services on the search engines. Update those pages with the proper title tags, H1 tags, and meta descriptions, and then start driving consistent links back to your website, authority links. They're going to help you rank better for the keywords in your area. And then from there, get involved in social media. Leverage email as a tool to get your actual customers to go ahead and 
engage with you on social media, and then put relevant information, engage with your customers on a, on a consistent basis in a way to get more repeat and referral-based business. So I hope, you know, I hope this information has been valuable. I hope you got a lot of um, insights that you can take and, and run with. You know, if you, if you feel like you'd like more information, you'd like to, you know, have something to guide you through this process as you go, you can go to our website, hvacseo.net slash free. There we've developed a complete guide that will take you step by step through the process of claiming your Google Places listing, finding the right citations, you know, the most commonly searched keywords, how you can add them to your website, and, and really how you can leverage social media in a way to get more repeat and referral-based business. If, you know, after watching this webinar, you know, you're, you're the type of person that says, hey, this is great information, but at the end of the day, um, you know, I'm not going to implement this myself. I, I think there's a great opportunity here, but I need an expert. I need a company that can take these ideas and strategies and implement them for me. You know, if that's you and you think, you know what, I might like to have HVAC SEO do this for me. I'd like to talk with you guys about how you could do that. We'd love the opportunity to work with you or to talk with you. You can call us directly at 866-610-4647. I, I would say, you know, we don't, we don't take on every organization. We only work with one HVAC contractor in each city, and we're pretty selective with the organizations that we work with. So, you know, if you think this might be a fit for you and you're interested, I, I'd urge you just to give us a call right away. You can reach us at 866-610-4647.